Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's the latest sequel of The Amazing Spider-Man series. It stars Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, Jamie Foxx, Dan DeHaan, Tom Furrow, Felicity Jones, Paul Giamatti, Sally Field, and Beth Davis, Campbell Scott, and Chris Cooper. And it's directed by Mark Webb. The movie begins set in the past. Peter Parker's father, Richard Parker, records a video message to explain about his disappearance before he and his wife, Mary, had took a private jet plane which was later been hijacked by a man sent to assassinate him. And with the pilot dead, the plane crashes with him. But meanwhile, in the present day, Peter continues to fight against crime as Spider-Man. He pursues a, a Russian criminal named Alexei Zavzipovich, that's played by Paul Giamatti who was tempted to steal a truck containing plutonium vials. But during the chase, Spider-Man rescues an Oscorp Industries employee, Max Dillon, who is played by Jamie Foxx. While speaking on the phone with Gwen Stacy, Peter keeps seeing all these visions of her father, Police Captain George Stacy, reminding to leave Gwen out of it. So afterwards, Peter finally meets Gwen at their high school graduation ceremony insisted to keep his vows to her father and ends their relationship. However, Peter's childhood friend Harry Osborne returns to Manhattan to see his terminally ill father Norman Osborne, who's played by Chris Cooper. And while Norman explains his illness as hereditary, Harry is at the age of where he first developed Norman to give Harry a small device that claims that it contains one of his life's work. And once his father dies, Harry is appointed as new Oscorp CEO. And that's where everything went completely overboard, where he humiliated the Oscorp board and about everything that his father's secrets, the biogenic projects that, that were going to be used for foreign military powers. But thinking how they become friends. Max idolized Spider-Man while attending to some maintenance at the Oscorp laboratory, which of course this was during his birthday. And suddenly, as, as an assignment, he falls into a tank of generically modified electric eels, which causes him to become a new villain named Electro. And then Things went completely wrong where, where Max finally wanders off in Times Square, already becoming what he is, and causing the whole blackout in, in New York City. And that's when Spider-Man decided to, to go after him, only to help him out, until things just went completely wrong. It causes uh, Electro to lose his temper and attack. While Harry was having some issues with, with his illness, he asked his assistant Felicia to form an equipment that could help him. So he makes a deal with Max to get him back inside the Oscorp building, there to find a suit of armor and other equipment that's made by Norman. And that's where he soon becomes, as we speak, a Green Goblin. So it's up to Spider-Man to stop two villains Electro and, and the Green Goblin for causing New York City to become a major disaster. And I really had a good time watching this film. It was actually very well made as it turned out. And it's definitely the perfect superhero movie that I've actually seen. In, in fact, I, at the same time I saw uh, Captain America you know, after this you know, during my birthday. Uh, yeah, that was a perfect birthday gift I ever had to see two good movies. But um, this one was actually very good compared to the last one, which is The Amazing Spider-Man. I mean, they had the meat of the story between 
the relationship with Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy. You know, they knew they were going to focus on what was going to happen. And we knew exactly how this was going. And I really enjoy, you know, the chemistry between, you know, once again, you know, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, two great actors right there. They really spark. However, I did love the villains in the film. Uh, this Ray Electro, who's played Jamie Foxx, and he did a very good job in his performance. I think this was definitely his best performance yet. He kind of steal the show, too, as the film was going. So we knew exactly how he feels. I mean, he's definitely you know, a CEO from the Oscorp Industries. He wanted to have a birthday party you know, to celebrate. Yeah, since it was his, his birthday. And the fact that Spider-Man saved his life, that was cool. Yeah. He's the kind of guy that never gets respect he deserves. And that's a shame. Because he really is a great guy. And there are a lot of great characters, too. Uh, Harry Osborn, yeah. he looks a little bit like, like Leonardo DiCaprio in that sort of way. But he's actually very good. You know? in comparing to the other uh, character that <laughs> James Francisco played. And, you know, even though I love James Francisco, though, but this guy, you know, we have yet to see him doing something. Once again, it had a great uh, story development, as it turned out. Uh, it really did focus more on what the story was happening, how it was going to happen, and everything. Paul Giamatti, on the other hand, gets sort of his short screen time, for the most part. Yeah, he did play the cheesy villain in this movie. Um, hopefully we'll get to see more of him once the third installment gets to it. So yes, we'll get to see him more. And maybe some more villains too that follows. Yeah. I mean, it's a shame that you know, everything just seems to go a little fast as it turned out. Well, I felt like the story felt a little rushed at times. But otherwise, it's perfect. I enjoyed it. Definitely worth recommending if you get a chance. Um, definitely go see it too if you want to. <laughs> Because you'll definitely have a good time in theaters. So anyway, I give The Amazing Spider-Man 2 four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.